Hey, well, welcome back to part two of two for this Makita chop saw. I'm gonna start putting it back together. My paint dried. The clear coat shrunk back a little bit as spray paint clear coat does, but it's a chop saw and it's gonna get used. Pretty much as soon as I get it together, I'll take a few pictures and then I need to use it for a project and it's gonna to get totally screwed up. Which further drives home the point, why am I doing this? I have weird hobbies. All right, I just finished buffing with super fine stuff for aluminum. And there's the finish. As usual with polishing, you could go until you were totally crazy with it. And if this were, say, the stainless trim on my car, I probably would and probably will. But first off, this is a tool. It's gonna get used, it's gonna get scratched up. And secondly, aluminum, I don't know if that's always the case because I kind of taught myself how to polish, so maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But I have a hell of a time getting a good finish on aluminum because it scratches so easily. I mean, right now I'm just using a soft paper towel and it leaves really fine scratches. So I have better luck with stainless and stuff and I suspect I'm not alone. But I'd say it's a big improvement from pulling it out of the mold, sanding it with an 80 grit belt and painting it silver, which is what they did from the factory. This will definitely be the nicest Makita chop saw in the world for about a day until I start using it. Okay, and normally I would run a tap through these, but I have one metric tap and it's not this size. It was close. I think it was the right size, but coarse thread and I needed fine thread. All right, just a recap of where I'm at now. Got the saw almost starting to look like a saw. Now with my nice polished finish is all covered in fingerprints. Got the motor part finished. I do have a blade for it. The guard is still sitting on the floor stripped. So I guess that's probably gonna be the last part I put on. The handles, half of the handle is kind of faded out. So I was trying to buff it back and try to get it all uniformly black. I wasn't having much luck, so I haven't decided what I'm gonna do. I might just sand it and polish it. I really didn't wanna spend a whole bunch of time on this handle. I wanted to just kind of polish it up so it'd be shiny, but it's, it's a little rough, as you would expect with a $26 saw. Started working on the handle here. I got the end off. This is alloy, so I could polish it. I just put all my buffing stuff away and I kind of don't want to drag it out. So I might just paint that. And then once I have that done, we should have the clamp finished. So that'll just leave the handle and the guard. Oh, and one more little thing. This 
cover goes over here and covers the threads. And it has been broken here. You can buy these, but the place I looked at least, you had to wait weeks for shipping. So I'm just gonna probably tack that up with the welder, grind it, paint it. So that's the game plan. We're moving along. Got the welder turned all the way down. And I'm still poking holes in it. Well, time for plan B. I'm just making this worse. My welder turned all the way down. I'm punching holes in this thing. So, back to the drawing board. When doing a project like this, it really helps if you can find an exploded parts diagram. This one here is from Tool Parts Direct. They actually sell a lot of these parts and it's for all kinds of brands and tools. It's worth looking them up. And I thought I had it all in my mind, but I'd kind of forgotten how this worked, that the bar goes through the block first and then a washer and then that bracket and then another washer and then the roll pin. So it's kind of a lot to keep straight. I was probably going to screw it up, and I don't know how much you like messing with roll pins, but they're not my favorite thing to hammer out and press back in all the time. Put a little bit of oil on that. Just clean that up on the wire wheel. That works much nicer than it did when I got it. Okay, so there's that piece. We're getting close. Well, you don't always get it right the first time.
Well, there you have it. It's finished. I'm sorry it took so long to get the second video out. I've been doing so many things for my actual job, and I've been fixing a car and doing all these other things. So fun stuff like this kind of takes a back seat. But I'm about to make my first cut with it. We'll see if it works, and we'll scratch it all up. Okay, first I want to square this up. And normally there there is a line, and you would just line that up at the zero and tighten it up. I want to be a little bit more precise than that. I probably don't need to. So I've got my square here, and this is in my way. Okay. I'm going to set the square against the disc. And the zero line is really close. Yeah, not quite dead on, but really close. Okay, I haven't actually tried this since I put it back together. So, got my safety glasses and my hearing protection on. And first I'm just gonna make sure it spins and doesn't make any terrible sounds or explode. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so first I just got a little thin piece of angle iron here. Let's see if it can handle that. This will be the first time I've ever used one of these saws. All right, say goodbye to our pretty paint job. Not too bad. Try to clean up the other side. All right, let's try something a little thicker. Let's try the C channel from the 20 ton press. All right, I might be seriously overdoing it here. Yeah, for whatever reason, it did not like that. I guess that'll be something to figure out for another day. But in the meantime, it's working for my purposes. I'm not gonna be cutting anything like this anytime soon. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna call that a win, because I got more projects to do. The one thing you may have noticed is that the guard doesn't come back down. And that's just because when I put the spring on, I didn't realize it looks like you gotta spin it you know, a half a turn or a full turn or something before you affix it, and I just put it straight on. So it has enough oomph to push it down most of the way, but then there's no springing left. So, but you know, I'll tweak that when I have a few minutes and I'll try to figure out why I didn't cut that big thick chunk of steel. I mean, it might just be beyond its limits. It might be kind of worn out. I might need brushes or maybe I really got to lay on it. I don't know, but I'm gonna call that done and on to the next one. Thanks for watching.